two-minute message, the closing argument from Donald Trump. Can he seal the deal? This morning we're joined by Trump's uh, senior communications advisor, Jason Miller. Jason, nice to see you this Good morning. morning. Good morning. That was, that was pretty, yeah, pretty heavy yeah. and pretty comprehensive. He, the Federal Reserve made an appearance in there. You don't, you know, you haven't heard that a lot uh, from any other candidate. So what, this is the core message of the campaign. This is our closing message. It's a two-minute ad. Mr. Trump is putting $4 million behind this ad to run in all the key battleground states, to run it nationally. And the way that we wanted to close out is, in his words, leading this movement, this energy. You guys see it at the crowds. We're seeing it with all of these states, these blue states, purple states, red states, all coming together. And this is a, just a strong, powerful message for Mr. Trump to close. Well, and it comes at a time where he's running against Hillary Clinton, where all these investigations are going on. At the very same time with his message basically saying, you know, we've got to get rid of the corruption in Washington. And Hillary Clinton, uh, as it's come out, has failed to disclose now, Cutter's a $1 million gift while she was at the State Department. I mean, getting back to this ad, I mean, this hits right at the heart of what people are so frustrated about, which they knew it existed, but now we actually have proof that those sort of things did actually go on. Well, exactly. And if uh, this is a change election and people are frustrated with the economy, they're frustrated with what they see going on in D.C., if we're ever going to change it, we have to send someone who isn't afraid to go and change it. That's what we see with Mr. Trump. And it's, it's powerful. And if <laughs> we're just getting started with what Mr. Trump can do as president for our country. Now, let's talk about some of these battleground states. This is fascinating to me. Obviously, the closing days. We've been talking about Pennsylvania. Donald Trump there yesterday in Hershey, Pennsylvania at a big rally. Um, Pennsylvania does not have early voting. So Tuesdays, uh, Tuesday, all eyes on Pennsylvania. Caitlin Huey Burns, though, from Real Clear Politics, says that Republicans often treat Pennsylvania as fool's gold. They think they can play there, and then they end up getting walloped. Do you see Pennsylvania as a legitimate state you guys can win? We have a real shot in Pennsylvania. Numbers are tight. Uh, most of the folks uh, say that it's a, a toss-up or that uh, we're right within the margin of error. And like you said, with most of the voting actually being on Election Day, you see the crowds, you see the energy in Pennsylvania. I mean, something special is going on. Some of our, our biggest events that we've had have been in Pennsylvania. So we've got three days out. Time for firm predictions. Where is the Trump campaign going to surprise us on Election Day? Mm. I think we're going to wake up on the 9th and see a number of these blue states go for Mr. Trump. They're going to really surprise people. You look at where he is today. We're in Florida. He starts off the day in Tampa. We feel very good about Florida. Uh, numbers there, um, the Republican numbers are up from where they were four years ago. Democrat numbers are down. I know John Roberts just talked about that shortly. Then we're going to Wilmington, North Carolina. Listen to this. In combined absentee and early voting in North Carolina, Republicans have turned in 93,000 more ballots than they did four years ago. Democrats are down by 5,000 ballots. So you see, going into a Election Day, there's already 100,000 votes, so we're doing better than four what years. What about ago. Michigan, Wisconsin? Are you willing to make a prediction there? I think Michigan, Michigan looks very good, as does Wisconsin. I mean, these, these states are all coming together. And even as we, uh, we were talking about just a moment ago, uh, Mr. Trump will be in Nevada and then Colorado. Yesterday, Republicans uh, pulled ahead as far as ballots being returned in the mail-in state of Colorado. And Mr. Trump will be there late this evening. We're making one last push, and we think we can... Well, what's the real the reason for this momentum? Because I think everyone's feeling it right now. Whether there's enough for Donald Trump to ultimately win on Tuesday, when you're out there campaigning, are people more concerned about the emails, the investigations, or is it more on the issues based on Obamacare and health care, things that impact their daily lives? Obamacare has been a big one. Obviously, Mr. Trump talks about repealing and replacing Obamacare. But I think it's the, the message of optimism. I think that he's given people something to vote for, something to vote for. This guy will make a change. He will make it happen. Uh, from the Clinton camp, everything is it's low road with more low road. And we're not seeing it. That's a, I think it's a bad message for them it's to gotten close pretty out. low. And I want to ask you this, because Democrats crying foul this morning. Rudy Giuliani made headlines on our couch just the other day, saying that he knew ahead of time that these, these emails, this investigation was going to be coming from the FBI, that he had heard from former FBI agents. And then he's sort of walking it back. D Democrats are saying you guys are in collusion with the FBI, and that's how this momentum has shifted because of the Trump collusion with the FBI. Do you want to address that? Well, I, I spoke with Mayor Giuliani, and Mayor Giuliani said that, uh, that he hasn't spoken with anyone who's active FBI or uh, anyone who's currently in the building. And I'll tell you from the, the campaign side, we first learned about this from the news reports, I believe it was somewhere around 1 o'clock last Friday when everything broke, and it was a, a big surprise to all of us. And so I, I think really where the Democrats are right now is the fact that Secretary Clinton is under their two FBI investigations going on, not just for what we're seeing with the, uh, mm -hmm. the Secretary of State, but also with the Clinton Foundation. Clinton Foundation right is also, I think that's important for people 
people to keep in mind. And then this news that she passed on sensitive information to Chelsea Clinton. I mean, think what would happen if information like that was passed on from a subordinate to, to their spouse or to one of their friends. They'd be run out of town uh, on a pike in no time. I mean, they'd, they'd be in big, big trouble. I don't understand why this isn't a bigger scandal. Yeah. Well, because Chelsea worked at NBC, so we know we can trust her. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something it's been like great that. to see you. Something like that. In, in that range. Okay. Thank Three days, Jason. Great to see you this morning. Yeah. Thanks, guys.